What's up guys, today is a great day. I have some upgrades for my Mini ITX build. I'm gonna be putting in a new graphics card, RAM, three new SSDs, some new cables. It's gonna be awesome, so let's get started. If you saw my first Mini ITX build video, you'll recognize the case. It's the same Western ITX 5B. For graphics, I'm upgrading to the Quadro K1200. I'm adding a Noctua NF8 FLX case fan. Then also for storage, I'm upgrading from my old 840 EVO and standard two terabyte platter drive to a 500 gigabyte 850 EVO and a 250 gigabyte 850 EVO along with a 250 gigabyte M.2 850 EVO. That'll be the boot drive. Uh, the 250 will be the scratch disk and the 500 will be for storing video files and programs and stuff like that. I'm also going to upgrade the RAM. I had 16 gigs before, I'm going with 16 again, but this has slightly faster latency and it was a little cheaper. I'm Here's a quick tip, in cases where cable management is an issue, like small form factor cases like this, there's really nowhere to run any of these cables. Uh, zip ties, specifically the tiny half size zip ties it seems like, they're, they're not a normal size, plus these little guys here. They have tape on the back and there are four little slots that you can slide the zip ties through can be a lifesaver. As you can see, I have zip ties going here, here, all over these cables. I have one of these guys slide right here down, holding the power cables down. I mean, they're really a lifesaver and they're super cheap. This is like, these are three bucks. This was like two bucks. Uh, you really can't beat it. If you're trying to mount a fan in a small case like this one, you're gonna run into some issues. There's only really one mounting point and that's here for the case fan with the exhaust but I want to have a fan here to throw some air over the graphics card and out through the exhaust in the back. So to do that, you can just grab some double-sided tape. It's super, super simple. Obviously, it's just tape. Cut it off, stick it on the bottom here, and bang, you're stuck onto your case. It works really well from what I've seen, and because double-sided tape is fairly thick, it's got like a foam core, it seems to eliminate vibrations that would come with mounting directly to the case in some cases. All right, here we have it. Everything is assembled and connected. I tested, it does post. Uh, some notable changes from last time. For one, the M.2 drive, which actually on this motherboard is located underneath, which is really cool. Uh, there's a M size slot, right here, actually let me turn it for you. There's an M SATA slot right here, but it's a mini M SATA, so you can't really fit an M SATA drive. But there is an M.2 slot underneath the motherboard, which is really cool. It's really convenient. And this case actually has a ventilation right here, which is pretty much almost exactly where the M.2 slide is. So that's kind of cool. It made it really easy and keeps the heat down because M.2 drives can get a little warm. Now for mounting. There is a drive cage for this that goes from the top here, but it just decreases airflow and I didn't really think it was necessary. So as you can see on the side here, I have the two drives mounted here. I kept the old 840 as a scratch disc. I realized I really didn't need a 250 gig scratch disc, so I kept my old 120 gig 840 as a scratch disc, and the 500 gig is here, and that's where I keep all my actual photos and videos for editing and stuff like that. Uh, the RAM is installed here, as you can see, with uh, right next to the Pico PSU. So that's the same PSU as, that I used last time. I just have the cables routed in a much better way. Uh, if you 
check out the old one. You can see how crappy the cable <laughs> management job was. So this is much cleaner. I know it still doesn't look great, but it's much cleaner. I also used some Velcro straps just to tighten up these bunches that you see there. And now you'll notice there used to be a fan right here that was blowing onto the graphics card and exhausting some air out the back towards here. But I realized that after testing it under load and at idle, it really was having no effect on the actual temperature because there's not enough circulation here to get it moving a bunch of air without turning the RPMs up to 2000 and making it super, super loud. So what I did instead was I took that out and I mounted a little 20 millimeter fan here that only spins up. It's completely off until it hits, I believe, 65 degrees and either the grab inside the actual case. So when it does that, it spins up. And this, actually, this guy actually does a really good job of exhausting air, believe it or not. And it really only kicks on when I'm, you know, editing, exporting a video, encoding something, or in the middle of a super intensive game or something. So very rarely does that happen, but it's good to have that there. And the system is, is quieter as a result of that. So that's, that's the actual system. Um, I think that, that covers everything. Yeah, the CPU cooler is the same. Oh, I, I did add, uh, before I used to have a gray, it was an 18 or 21 inch uh, USB 2 cable. I got rid of that because it was super long, just another, another thing that was taking up space. Got a nice eight incher, so that's cool. And obviously with the six inch SATA cables, there's mu they're almost the perfect, perfect length. They're much better than the old 12 inches that I had that come standard with most motherboards. So just with the little things, when you're building a system like this, you should plan every inch. I mean, you really kind of have to. And I learned after the first build what works and what doesn't work. As in, oh, also, one last thing. Um, the power cable that comes from the Pico PSU and wraps around, it used to go over, it used to have it going over the CPU cooler, which just decreases airflow and does nothing for the case. So instead, I got a extender piece, which is what's hanging out right here, and I routed it from the side all the way with these clips here and then out. So it's a much cleaner look. It doesn't block the exhaust really at all. And it just keeps everything cleaner and cooler. So I'm getting about, about uh, what was it? 43 degrees idle, which is not bad for, um, for this system, a system this small. This Quadro card does put out a decent amount of heat. It puts out significantly more heat than the old K620 that I had in here. Now it's more powerful. It's got, RAM, it's got more RAM, more everything. So that's to be expected, but with that, I, I needed to do some finagling and moving stuff around. So that's the system. So those are the upgrades. I shot reviews for the K1200, the 850 series SSDs, and the Noctua case fan. So you can check those out if you want. You could also go back and check out the first mini ITX build video. It goes a little bit, bit more in depth as to why I built the system and why it's so small. So thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you liked it. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.